Hey everybody, <coughs> this is Brad Dyke saying hi, and I <coughs> decided that I was doing a side project a long time ago actually, I was kind of, you know, saying, you know, it's kind of broke, it's kind of not, um, and what I'm referring to specifically is this Seagate Black Armor NAS 400 Array. Now, you see the problem with this array is pretty easy. What I consider somewhat very poorly designed is you see these little tabs here? Well, they, they're rubber coated, but because of their rubber coating, the type of rubber that they have, if you look here, disintegrates. So the end result is that you have hard drives that fall out of their bay. See, there are two there. And then there's one there, and then one disintegrated over here. And uh, I have two drives here that are actually in the very same bad situation. Uh, one or two of those are broken off, as you can see here. So this is a very poorly designed caddy. They were trying to make it toolless. And um, what they made it was useless, actually. So not a good design, and there is no way... You could supplement these with screws. Now you could put caspers in, which is basically a washer slash style screw, and that could work. But the truth of the reality is this is just not a good design, period. I give this a C at best. But here we look at this chassis, and I have this empty void of stuff I can't do anything in. So what can I do with this? What can I improvise? What can I play with? What can I do? So I look back here on the back. It is an AS. It has a USB, two NICs, one covered because it's not going to be on the backup slash front end. And USB outputs here. Power output, of course. We have a fan assembly. We have a case housing. So I've taken the shell off. I've got an empty bay right down there. That's the baseboard. And down here, I have the actual NAS device. And there's the battery right there. And as you can see, it's a small base like arms kind of design baseline processor with basic memory and so on and so on it's a very pre raspberry pi kind of strategy so what can i do with this well i decided i was going to try to get it back in use again but this time do it in a format that would actually do what i want and that is house drives now if you look in here I have four 2.5 inch spinning hard disks down here. That's an 80, that's a 120, that's a 120, and that's a one terabyte. And my thought was, I could build this guy out, put in 2.5 inch old style hard drives, right? And I have a kind of a gray area here in this base design where there's a little bit of space on the bottom, but I'll put a spacer in there to better support these drives, but for now I'm using a sta anti-static padding. And as you look here, this one right here tends to vibrate a little bit. And that's not good, so I'll have to fix that. But my thought is, this air ventilation process is actually going to work pretty good for these smaller drives and give us what we're looking for to accomplish our mission statement. And that is how to repurpose this useless NAS array because of the fact that its caddy is no longer serviced correctly. Now, obviously vibrations, cavitations, and so on caused by spinning hard disks can cause some additional problems. So let's take a look at that. Now, what I did this time is I'm putting foam supports because foam is actually very good at stabilizing hard drives, especially when you're doing testing. And that's all I'm doing here, really. Um, I, I can put in little feeds in there or tracks if I want. But the smart thing to do is to put a screw in one of the screw mounts. If you look right there, you'll see that I have actually done that. You'll see screws sitting up there in these bays. And I've extended the screws a little bit more right there, down on the bottom, so that they act as kind of like a support platform. So they drop down on the foam and pushing the foam into the metal tray. This is the tray right here that the previous caddy as you can see here, would have slid into like that. But 
Um, heat diffusement is a problem here that does worry me a little bit. And one key function of the caddies themselves is a heat diffusion effect. See those perforated sectionals there? And I think that I could possibly trim the head off of this. And I might just do that. I think I'll trim this off and use this because this caddy is useless and I'm not going to get the plugs for it. So I think this might be the right strategy here is to cut this off here and then put this in and just let it lock into play like it would normally be a hard drive that's in there but in the reality of it it's not so that's just a, a thought process that I have but let's see what I can do here hang on a minute okay so I basically trimmed this out so that all I have is this piece right here which connect as my diffuser so the way this would work is I would put this into bay and lock it into place like that and it's to, with all four of them in here, will act as a diffusing effect opposed to this wide open area, which we don't want to have. Now, what I could also do is I could cut the bays a little shorter on the insides so that I could still allow it to travel some in, like, like I don't know, an inch and a half, maybe? Maybe? Let me check. I'll try that with the next unit here. Hang on. Okay, so that did seem to work a little bit better. I gave it a little bit more length to act as a filler. So when it goes in, it will... Uh, let me go ahead and pop that off real quick. Open that up. So when it goes in to the bay, and then I lock it into play, it's going to hold better because of the feed. And like I said, I want air diffusion effect to here to work. So let me go ahead and get the other two set up the same way. Hang on a minute. Okay, so that worked. I've got this all in place now. And I've got the interface in play as well. So I should be able to give this power. I don't know if those drives in there are going to really work well. Uh, that's not the point. The point was, is would this strategy work? As it steams right now, it definitely is going to keep air control in check, which is what I want. I'll close this door. That will keep the panel feeds in good shape. The air it actually filters from up here and travels down through and then into here and diffuses correctly so that the heat is being addressed independently per each set. So let me go ahead and put this back together real quick and we'll see if we can access it. Okay, so we've got connectivity, we've got power, I have airflow, so we'll turn this around real quick. And we have a boot and it is coming up. I have a, an IP address, so we're going to watch it come up, and then I'm going to go ahead and boot up a machine over here, and take a look at this and see what we've got. Okay, so I've got my Gen 7 here booting up, letting it post into and get come on up, and I'll use this to see if we can administrate the actual... Um, platform itself. Let me check something here real quick. Make sure I've got that right. Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna let this boot up. Let me check the post cycle. Okay, so we're uh, allowing it to post. Now this is a Gen 7 single 1U footprint with uh, two processors, about 68 gigs of RAM. Really great if you're going to attach a direct dis attached device like this or the uh, 2248, uh, 20, 2246 down there in the bottom. If you don't want to do anything localized except for some highly redundant boot drives, as you can see here. But uh, we're allowing the system to post here, and it is supposed to be... Oh, okay, there it is. All right. So now we will go ahead and test the prefmon on this to make sure it comes up. Okay, so what we've done here is we've posted the environment up 
and it is seeing the drives, which is what we want. And it is posting, and it's circulating correctly. It's not airing out. That's good. Of course, I've got clean, fresh drives I've got to reformat to make this work. But I was able to bastardize this thing into a fully operational NAS again. It's a good little NAS. It would make any one person happy for archiving purposes. You put a couple of 2 terabyte, 2.5 inch drives in here. And they'll not only stay pretty cool, but they'll be in pretty good shape. Or you can use your spinning discs, even go bigger if you want. Uh, but this is what happens when they go with these, what I call piss poor connector figs trying to get away from the screws and the end result is you just have a piece of useless plastic that doesn't work so with that being said just wanted to revive this old NAS uh, it's about five years old five maybe six years old we got it for a denominational office so they'd have an ability to back up it's a great little repository for backing up stuff you do have to be careful with it now uh, you know you don't want to transport it roughly you want to be careful with it. You want to make sure that the drives are properly seated before you power the unit up. And at that point in stage, you'll be able to, you know, work with something that's going to get you where you want to be. Uh, you could also use the trays diskless style approach, but I don't recommend it. Those plastic trays just don't hold well, even if you put sticky tape in there to use them. I wouldn't do that. I say go smaller, put a small subframe in there, cut a piece of a couple of pieces of saw plastic in there they're very supportive and then keep them fairly stationary the SATA interface and the power connectors will keep them in place but with that being said uh, it's a toy you know it it didn't work now it does you just have to be a little bit more cautious and careful with it you can actually use the the modified front panels to act as a pressuring point to put pressure against the drives as well just to make sure they stay snugly into their place well this is Brad Dyke saying I uh, hope you guys like this. It's a you know a fairly basic, straightforward approach to trying to bring something that's no longer usable in the old way. You know, slice it, cut it up, frame it, change it, move it, move it. You know, like the movie used to say in Madagascar. Uh, turn it into something newer, something more pragmatic. You know, I'll take these drives out. And what the heck? I'll just throw SSDs in it. Just see what happens. See if it craps out. See if it's successful. You know, there are NVMe uh, M.2s uh, that have SATA power out interfaces, and you can put those on, and absolutely the SATA and power connector will well handle the placement of that small dot or adjustment card. And uh, you're, you're, you're dealing with SATA, but that's okay. I mean, it's a NAS, right? A one gigabit pipe. So you're not going to get performance. You're just going to get functionality. Something to think about neat idea i might even do that i've seen the uh small little sata power connector edge that has the mv that has the uh, m.2 on the back end sata version connector uh kind of looks like this so if you look here here is a pcie mvme right here and then here is the sata version with the sata output out here it's getting the power from the pcie bus which we can't use that but there's a small little daughter card out there that will actually be about that wide and has this small little adjuster out here for a uh, you know M.2 to put, be put in there, and this is the flip over version. If you notice that right there, the MVME is the other direction. If you see right there, and uh, you know you could absolutely do some pretty cool stuff with that. You know, 500 gig drive, you know, four of those MVME, very light. Put some heat sinks on to make sure they stay cool, and you've got some success. So with that being shown, there's something else that you can do with old NASs. If you can buy them cheap for like 50 bucks, we're only talking about the four drive bay versions. Uh, I wouldn't do two drives. You're not going to get much value out of that. But if you can get a NAS that is scalable and memory, that's not a bad deal, actually. Um, you can get Soho memory pretty cheap. You know, it's basically a very small piece of memory. That will go right on the uh, uh, what's called the adjuster port. It's kind of a uh, uh, a um, what is it? Uh, so dim, I think. I believe that's the correct term. Basically, like laptop memory. And if you've got one of those on board, put more memory on board. 
because inside the NAS OS environment, which is the DOS, the disk operating system, uh, you can go in there and be able to cheat and boost your caching effect for your one gig connection pipe. So you're writing to rent memory only, and then later it will write from memory to the spinning disk. So if you can go from a two gigabyte version NAS, which is pretty low end, to a four or an eight, spectacular. Take the time and, and do that. And you know, do, do a little research. This little guy, he's maxed out. I had already put the memory in it when I bought it many years ago. So it has all the advantages that I need. So putting you know SSD drives in it is overkill because it will never get the advantage of SSD drives on a one gig network connection. Uh, but spinning disk, super cheap spinning disk, one terabyte, 2.5 inch, $25, $30 each cheap you can do that and that makes that NAS once again very usable opposed to the old days of uh, using 3.5 inch drives that's 500 gigs each so you, know, you can quadruple the amount of capacity and actually have the ability to use a 1 gig NAS why would you use a 1 gig NAS that's pretty straightforward you like videos you like photos you take family photos you want uh, maybe work-related information. You can use it as a repository for backups. You can use it for repository for code. You can use it for many things as long as you set it up in a redundant RAID 1 or a RAID 5 with one failover. That would be three disks with one disk acting as a failover or a hot swap in case you lose a disk. That's redundancy. That's a good solution for a backup slash data archiving system. The other thing I recommend you do when you start dealing with systems like this is the true power of a NAS is when it's not powered up. That's right. You heard me say it. Unplug it, shut it down gracefully, and leave it off. Why? Because it's the ultimate form of security. It really is. InfoSec will tell you a hundred different ways to try to prevent from penetration. But the truth of the matter is you don't need your NAS up all the time. <clears throat> Some of my greatest security templates that I've done over the years is scheduling outages. I turn the stuff off and nobody has any issues. No threats, no challenges, not even attacks on the ports. It just gets nothing. So something to think about. Power up your NAS once a month. Power it up every six months. Power it up when you think it's best to do so. Do your jobs. Synchronize your files. Do your backups. Dump your, your data, whatever you want to do to protect your personal critical data, and then go into the disk operating system or the NAS OS and shut her down. Leaving it offline <coughs> allows you to be able to have the ultimate form of security. So this is Brad Dyke. I thought I'd make another small little video here on stuff that I'm re rebuilding. I'm going to sell this NAS probably for like 50 bucks. Uh, I'm just playing with it, really, uh, to have some fun. But uh, that's it. Take care. God bless.